Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever and wherever you are. And welcome to the Beta Blast. So, this time, we're going to start a campaign in Crusader Kings 2. And hopefully no audio clipping, as I don't need to go in and out of the program in order to read a little script. Yeah, just know that. I hope everybody will forgive me. It's my first video. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Now that we have got that out of the way, let me show you what I had in mind. We are going to see this little crazy plan a little later. But we are going to start in the Charlemagne period. However, we are not going to choose, of course, one of those characters that they say, well, why don't you choose one of these characters? Because that is boring paradox. I'm so sorry, but... I wish you would just allow us to go from this screen into the proper game. But ever since post 2.1, you cannot do so. We are going to start, however. But what we are going to do is not start with Charlemagne or any of the lands in the west, nor any of the large Sunni realms in the south. And we're not even going to involve ourselves in it. Some might already have noticed. This series is called Tenacious Tribes. We are going into the heart of Mother Russia. Because Mother Russia, when we look at religions, has a few different religions going for it. Around in this area, in the heart of Russia. Now, in order... To reform a pagan faith, you need at least three holy sites and 50% of moral authority of your faith. Or you need to have all holy sites. Now if I would go on Mover, three sites are pretty close by. And getting this island for instance is not so much of a trouble. Too easy. Done that. Nah. So Vanesco, a little difficult. Lies more far apart, but still not really much in threat of anyone else regarding fighting over these spots. No, we are going in the true heart of Russia, slaving on the border of these four pagan religions. And we are going to try and reform the faith, but not only that, because everybody has done that. We are going to stay a tribe. Or as long as we can. And if we can, until the very tippy end of Crusader Kings 2. Yes, that is the beat up. Moreover, we are not going to start with, for instance, the strong Ilmi. No. You tend to see Slovensky creating a Rus. It might be Krivic who goes for Ruthenia. Sometimes you see the two of do it. Sometimes the Severeski. Most of the times Dragovic gets lost, sometimes wins, but you hardly ever see, see the Vieti. Or the Inezit. But if I would choose the Inezit, they're in the Mortian culture. Over here. No, that's not a Russian culture. We're going out of Russia. Vieti. Where all the rivers come together. And I am going to Horribly butcher these names. I'm so sorry. But I hope everybody is interested. So, let's start Iron Man. And let's start CK2. And we are going to name this in honor of you guys. YouTube. Series. Tenacious. Tribes. Start Iron Man. <clears throat> Are you as excited as I am? Well, it might be a little less after all. This is my first YouTube thing and... Uh, yeah, also these kind of voices, you can expect that a lot on this channel. I also play role-playing games. And I can flip my voice quite easily. Making it sound a little different. But okay, <clears throat> enough about that. Enough about making a fool out of myself. Let's see where we are. We are... Ooh, we might have touched. I like that. 
are also lustful. One of the better traits in my eyes of the sins. And not just because it's uh, nice. Her, her. Now, uh, lustful gives you fertility. And that is always good when you're already 36 and you want to get some babies. So that's kind of good. Brave. People like when you're brave. You get extra defense when you're fighting in battle. Vassals like you better. We're trusting. That's not so good. Because we got higher intrigue of lustful. But then trusting. And it also lowers our diplomacy. And we're arbitrary. Which people hate. However, we apparently can hold all of our lands. Which is really good. We have a domain limit of 6. And we have only 3 little pieces of land. However, we have no heir to our throne. Our heir is... Well, a good general. I'm probably gonna make him marshal if he's not already. I don't know why he's not he's already. Uh, let's see, we are elective Gavel kind, of course. I'm going to immediately increase this. I don't know why he's going to stop me. By the way, this is the increasing of the tribal organization. Making sure... Yeah, he is our marshal. I don't know why this is not... Normally you see his little symbol over here. But alright. Well, I will nominate him except that my game does not allow that right now i don't know why it does not really really matter um so let's see what we have around us we have this gentleman who doesn't have too much troops this is horrible he's a piggy as i always call it he's gluttonous and i have about double his troops this might be our first opponent to attack and this man has more troops and I'm looking that by looking very quickly here. Ah, uh, yeah. This guy will probably have a lot. Yes, indeed he does. And he has no sisters to ally. This is this is always a problem in the beginning of CK2. There are very few women. But there is the Lady of Kiev, and I'm definitely going to send immediately if she would like to marry me. Because if we can get babies. If we can mix them babies by making love all night long, we might both areas. And I would definitely love like that. So let's say that we want to get married because we found a lovely little wife. In CK2, you can marry for different reasons. One of them is what I just did now. To gain area. She rules Kiev. I rule this area. If we get a son, he will inherit both. It's a very good reason to marry, at least back in the Middle Ages. I would now just suggest to marry out of love, but before we get an old those heavy things, let's first get it more started. You could also marry for traits. Uh, I'm not going to look that right up, but you can have uh, traits that are can be inherited by your children. You can be strong, genius, quick, attractive, all that. Also bad traits, don't get me wrong. You can marry a hunchback and you can be ugly and whatever. You can marry for one of those good traits. You, you could marry for the bad traits, but I wouldn't advise it. Or you could marry, for instance, uh, for an alliance. Uh, not just, per se, to get the crown, but simply for an alliance. Like, it wouldn't have happened, but if I would marry into Middle Frankia, they would be my alia, ally. They would be really nice. <laughs> but I'm a pagan and I don't want them. So, we're not even going to look at that. Uh, sorry. Wrong button. So, we have no successor. We don't care. Uh, we are on many really we understand that we have no character focus Well, we are want to go to war and I want to be a get children So I think for now I'm gonna go for hunting It's pretty common tra trait to pick I understand I know I know but unfortunately There are not a lot of women to seduce for instance also don't have a large family to choose for extra fertility via that There is just very little opportunities because it's a little bit of the beginning of the game Marshall we will select it now we will get more war score, which means uh, more war score. <laughs> Sorry, that's an EU4 term. We will get more martial score, therefore we are more able to rally our men to our cause in order to fight. Uh, we're going to wait on that. We have no error to the dynasty, we're going to lose it all. All of this is arranged. Let's see what the game does and if she indeed allows us to marry her. Oh lady, oh lady. So far away, I want to hump you every day. Oh, and she says, yes, I am very happy. Yeah, a little bit later reaction. Oh, I chose the gold. Normally I should have chose the prestige, but now I chose the gold. Ah, oh well. Everyone can make mistakes. It happens. No big deal. I want to have a son. 
I hope she wants a son too. No, she wants money. Greedy little... Uh, the point is that if you choose to have children, uh, your character is going to try and uh, do a little bit more oomph in the bed and you will get a fertility bonus. And as such, uh, a higher chance to get children. So, I, um, normally you would play on one or two if nothing's to do, but yeah, there is like really nothing to do. So I should bump it higher, but I'm waiting on to see if I can catch this guy. Because I could just do a subjugation war. You can only do that once in your lifetime. So I need to be really careful. And I have her as an ally, which is really good. I might want to go for Rostov. Because it has freelance and we can hold freelance, which is six in total, which put, put us pretty strong. Culture-wise it's different. Religion-wise it's different, but eh. I'm not gonna attack someone on there. I'm just a little bit afraid of if I attack and I have little troops that he will attack us. That's mostly my fear, so to speak. So We're going to declare it. And we're going to ask for help. From my lovely little wife. And he has also declared war. On the same dude! That's not cool, man. And my wife honors my call. That's good. But if he calls it on the same dude, that means that <laughs> there's a quite possibility that the lands will be split instead of uh, all going to me. And that, of course, is absolutely not good. So I'm going to go here already. To make sure I will conquer these lands and not him. He may support me. That's fine. I don't care about that, but... I will conquer these lands. I hope. I'm not going yet to a higher speed because I need to be careful of this army. Now, I almost want to split my army to make sure that I would get the other land, but... Because no, but I'm afraid that if I split my army that he will get the main siege because I was not the first one to arrive, which is also shown that my marshal is sieging. Oh, he's going away. This is the moment to split our armies up. We're not gonna aid in the battle. We are going to be really jerks. We are going to be extreme jerks. And let my wife's troop handle it all. I know we don't have enough people here to uh, siege. But that is not the point. We arrived here first. That is more important in this case. And he had low morale. So we already started this battle. This is a decent start, I would say. And now we are sieging. And we are leading the siege, which is good because we arrived first. We have a good chance of getting ahead here. So, are you declared on by a third person is now what I wonder? Because I see another army standing here. Uh, no, do, do you have an ally? Are you two allies with one another? Oh, we must find the white bear. This is an event... Oh, I clicked on it too fast. Sorry, for certainly for my first video. I should go a little slower. If you choose a focus... You get random events that spice up the game, and I should have certainly should have read that out loud. I'm so sorry, I will try and remember that for the next time. I am going to now in search of the white bear. And when I find this white bear, I will kill it, skin it, and feel all-powerful. I hope. <laughs> you can get random events that are good and bad, whenever, whatever focus you choose. And some focuses are better some days and other way around. And there is really not one that is better than the other, in my opinion. If you say that, then you missing out on the point that some are just fun. <laughs> For instance, uh, scholarly focus is not considered very good. Because the bonus that it gives is not very practical for... A military leader or just a, a ruler but uh, you can have your faith flip randomly simply because you're reading books about theology and then you're thinking like you know what 
Catholicism is bad. I'm going Fraziatelli or another Qatar. I'm just saying a heresy of the faith that you're of yourself. So we are going to pause the game for a short moment just to explain people for the first time what's going on. So we siege everything. I spread my army nicely. That's why we got all the area instead of him. We have a 100% war score. We also have a woman, but this woman is not of importance. She is not of a dynasty. She's a lowborn. And thus, I don't think I can ransom her. No, he doesn't allow it. So all we are going to do is say, well, we're going to lower the speed. And we're going to say, yo, you're subjugated. And he has to accept this. It is that simple. We're going to stand down our men. And he is out. And the war that this guy was fighting is over because I took it all over. I got these two territories and he was left with one. Uh, yeah, that is uh, very good, I would say. So now what I didn't do is do my council. Now I'm going to do it. I'm going to try and get more troops. That is what this function does. Levy size. Levy is more or less your troops. Now I also, I know building legend is considered very good. But I like to settle the tribe. I want to get 5% chance that the people here change their culture from Mordvin towards my culture. Because if you look at the tribe here, the amount of men that I get, I have wrong religion and wrong culture, culture and that is decreasing significantly my levy size. So I'm going to try and change that. Moreover, I am going to try and say to these people like, Hey, why don't you go over and become our religion? Or at least I'm trying by sending our type of bishop, I think. I would say bishop would be about the, 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 the proper title for that. To spread our faith. Now our spy master, all everybody has about the same technology. So she cannot study technology, more or less spy. So we are going to try to find out if nobody's want to kill me by using this scheming button. I could also try and see if I can fabricate a claim, but I'm first going to try and see if I can I'll talk a little bit to this guy. Like, I know I took your lands, but I'm really a nice guy. So, <clears throat> good news, my lord. We have received credible reports of a recent sighting of the great white bear in the province of... Oh, dear. Uh, not in the province of Odir, of, but of Vi Viaza Viasma. All the Russian people are going to hate me who see this video. Okay, sell on my horse. Uh, yeah, I want him to be a little bit more friendly. Because he's going to have a lot of mm, claims. Strong claim, and it's going to be inherited by his daughter. Uh, and he hates me, so he certainly is not going to give me any troops if I ever go to war. So I want to placate him a bit. Because if you get enough prestige as a tribe, you can summon a tribal army. Just for free, you get... Uh, let me show you that a little bit more precise here. Uh, the, oh, sorry, that's a decision. I am so sorry. It's a decision. Raise tribal army. Now, you need prestige. You lose this prestige. And you gain freely 2,500 men. Now, I don't think he's going to get that prestige... <laughs> very easily <laughs> not by a long shot but still it's quite smart not to um, just annoy your vassal too much in my opinion on the other hand what I also could do is just revoke the title and you might do it you know what I'm gonna do that he doesn't have enough man to say no to me in my opinion or uh, if he does I'm just gonna smack him in his face and just take his land I have the ability to hold it I just want a guy gone. What am I doing? I, I don't need to make friends with him. Why would I make friends with him? <laughs> Bloody Mordvin. Voila! And he's gone. Get out of here. You had no troops. I want it all. And it said that everybody that was below me... Ooh. Hold on. A lot of things happening. Everybody that was below me, like vassals that were in this uh, areas, which could be a bishopric normally, or a city, or a castle. So a baron. Or people that own one county and are not duke level, like this blue lines indicate. Well, they all hated me with minus 80 because I just said, Hey, your land, I know you have all rights to it, 
Mine. Yeah, but I don't have any vassals, so who gives a hoot? You've spent weeks in the wilderness, searching for any trace of your prey, but to no avail. However, you find that you rather enjoy being out in the wild. All this daily physical activity, it makes you feel strong. This is great! So I have a 20% chance to become strong. This is this trait I said you could also try to get uh, by marrying. If your wife is strong, your son might be strong. And this is a very good trait because it adds health. Health bonus is really good because you live longer. Healthy people live longer, if you didn't know. That, that's kind of one of the major selling points of living healthy. So it's saving again. With me, it saves every half year. Uh, I unfortunately did not become strong, and apparently I have been fruitless. You have returned to your court. The hunt for this elusive white beast seems fruitless. But there are many more things out there in the wilds. Maybe next time you will catch your prey. I won't give up. Alright. Let's crank the speed up just a tiny little bit. And please, if anyone can tell me how to pronounce these... These provinces. These regions. Please try. I would love to learn. <laughs> I really would love to learn. <laughs> I can't promise I will do it correctly, but I will try. Because uh, I just know this is Moscow, not, not as... Mos Moskava? Moskava? Or Peri Perioslav Zaleski? I hope I pronounced it correct. I probably don't. But yeah, this, this region is the Moscow region. And we are just next to it. But, uh, and already we are trying to make it a little difficult for ourselves by having a different culture and a different religion within our border. But trying to gain strength by being by growing and we have we certainly have we can now call up 2200 men unfortunately however we can no longer declare a war for uh, as you can see I, I have no war declaration it's actually here now grayed out because we can't subjugate another person we could probably do a holy war on this man because he is Sumanesco and he could indeed and I actually have a de jour claim, I didn't even know that. That could work out in our favor. Yes, because I am the duke of this area. Oh. Because I am the duke of this area. And that's what this button does. The de jure duchies. De jure is what supposedly belongs in this. So I am the duke of Rostov. Here. High chiefdom of Rostov. Duke. So I should hold this area actually. So I could first say, well, dude, hey, this supposedly is mine, so I should take that. And then later on, after our truce has expired, we could go for this for a holy war. So I might actually attack this. Uh, I started an uneasy... It started as an uneasiness around guests and strangers. Then evolved into awkwardness and strong feelings of discomfort. Now, I can either be... I don't want to meet any new people and get shy, or I'll just have to try to be more gregarious. So, talk a lot with people. Personally, I don't have nothing against shy people. I... Uh, I, I personally find them... I, I'm very extrovert, and people can hear it all probably already from these two first two videos, but... Uh, I... I seem to be able to... connect well with shy people, so I... I find it a little bit of shame to just get minus two diplomacy, but it's logical. But perhaps they... Shy people do tend to be bookworms and smart, so... Eh. But okay, hey, that's just how the game works. I'm going to try and be gregarious, talk all the people. And I became... Talking to people and getting to know them is something I really like. I've gained the gregarious trait. Okay. That's very good. So, he seems to be at war and I... No, there are just people in this land. I don't know why. Why are you holding up in his land? You are attacking whom? You are attacking him. Well, that doesn't really matter to me. That you're attacking him. So I am going to see... You, my man. You have a thousand and eight troops. I have double that. And you. Are you of also... Sumonesco fate. I could also... Uh, clear on you. 
I will declare on you. Uh, you have Harley in a man. I'm declaring on you. And this time I'm not going to call on my wife. Because I don't want her to get too weak down in the south. I don't want her to become very weak here. And I can easily handle him. So first let's do this war. And see if we can gain some land. Ah, and there we have reinforcement. There my marshal says, hey. My high chief, I have gained new men that are willing to lay their lives on the line for you. Oh, very good. Very good. So first this war. This should be a snap. And then we could go to war with him. And because it's a tribe, tribes are very easily... Sieged. They call this a siege, but it's kind of weird, of course, calling it a siege on a tribe because you have no. Well, they had they had defensive structures. They had high walls. They tended to be sometimes even something of a moat simply by by having a, a creek or a stream pass by them. But it doesn't hold out an army as large as this. So I'm just going to siege this down, and then we'll see how we likes it when we take over on his land he, he probably won't like it i can tell you that already time so we're going to do this war then we're going to try and do this war and then i think it might already be time for the end of our first video well first proper video of uh, this series there's a lot of war going around yep and he is uh, being attacked. You, there is not a subjugation war in order to gain all the lands. And say, hey, I'm stronger than you. I want it all. Voila. Oh, pause for a second. My computer seems to have a little bit of trouble. Uh, yeah, he lost. I take it all. And that is good. But I just realized what I forgot. And uh, that's why I'm pausing, because otherwise it's going to get a bit complicated. I am a pagan. And pagans have the ability to take concubines. Pagan rulers can have up to three concubines in addition to their wife. Concubines are not truly married, but they will barely lead to legitimate children. A woman who is a prisoner of a pagan ruler can be forced to becoming his concubine. Even if she's already married. Yeah, more or less, you can rape your prisoner. Not really good, but it gives you prestige. So we're gonna do it, our prisoners here, because eh, we conquered them and it's just the way of things. Her, her, her. We, she's, oh, not gonna speak her name. As your concubine, we can take her as a concubine because she is your prisoner and she cannot refuse, but we're gonna do it. And I'm gonna take another, oh, by the way, just to show you, this is my prestige count. Nubile concubine, one time, so I gain more prestige. So I'm taking another Nubile concubine. And they won't like it. Trust me. Abductor. Short reign. I'm a foreigner. They, they don't like it at all that, they done this, this, that this is done to them. But hey. They can't complain. Where if I take this woman. I'm not going to take her. She's chased. I will take my spy master. That's kind of good. Because then I have a chance to make her my lover. And then she will be happy about it. Yeah. She, she is fine with being a concubine. And this has happened, by the way, really in the past. Concubines. No, I don't know if you declared a war, but you're losing it. No, you're defending, and you attacked across the river. Defending against the High Chief of Ilmen, and you went through my land to attack him across a river. Well, instinctively, even if people don't know this game, Attacking across a river is not smart. It makes your people fight less well. We're going to make a de jure claim on this area. That will be... Uh, de jure claim means that if I would instead have done a holy war, for instance, there would... People of his faith would have come to his aid, but now they are, will probably not come to his aid. Uh, actually, they won't come to his aid for sure, except that his allies, his true allies, might have come to his aid. But that is not happening. Because he didn't have any allies, I noticed, because there aren't any highborn women or women 
women. Wow, I am so sorry about that. Uh, in the beginning of the game, so he doesn't have any strong allies. I, I don't have any Bennett Generals then. Uh, wow, that is kind of bad. Let's win this fight. We did not call in my wife. My, uh, might have been smart to do so. We're getting a little safe. No, we're not doing too well, actually. Seeing by the numbers, we are losing. We are calling in my wife. Wow, that is embarrassing. Well, at least she's coming with fresh troops, so that's good. I am just gonna lick my wounds here for a moment. Ow! Pain! Yevastif, sorry, justice has brought peace to a troubled province. Fewer crimes are committed and fewer complaints are heard in the province. Peasants have never been happier. That's very good. It's very, very good. Ah, uh, my wife is coming with 15,000 men. Very good. I thought we could handle this alone. Miscalculated, but I have my lovely wife, the Duchess, who I really would like to get a baby with. I want babies. Oh, and for our, before anyone is ever going to say that, before they ever arrive on these videos, I am going to give all the credit for this pronunciation of this word to Shenrir. It's a it's a, a cool YouTube channel you might want to watch. He also plays games like CK2 and EU4, and I definitely took uh, from him this bebes to make bebes. But it's more of a mannerism that I took over than anything else. So, these numbers... Oh dear, my first child is from a concubine. Um, that couldn't, need not be bad, but children of concubines have less... How to, how to say that? Not prestige, but people look down upon them. It's not really the children of a true... Oh! Oh, hold on. So it's not a child of the true wife. Of the high chief, so they get a little a, a small diplomacy hit, and we captured a guy merely in battle. And seeing he doesn't have enough money to pay for his release, we are going to offer him peace immediately because we captured him. And in medieval time, it is so that if you capture your the highest guy from the opponent's side, he has to surrender immediately, hundred percent. You can see that by. Battle's only 4%, but still we have 100% and that's simply because we captured him. Thank you. You lost that province. We are going to bring back our guys. And we are going to put down the army and look at the du jour duchies. Let me see here. This is the du jour Moscow duchy. So I'm going to say that this is the best land to give away or the Yaroslav. One of the two, so that uh, we don't have too much land. But that is all for the next time. So, I hope to see you in the next video. And if you like the video, please leave a like. Or if you just have a comment, leave a comment. Do whatever you like. I'm doing this for my own fun. But if you want to join the fun, please subscribe, like, and do all those YouTube things. Until next time, on the Beta Plan.